Hello to everybody. Here is Monica Bartels. Um, I would like to explain as a very first uh, what hinting does with your design on well-designed contours. And maybe you will be a little bit shocked I show you that your well-designed contours will be pressed by hinting to a grid of squares. If you take um, clear type hinting, um, they will be pressed into colored squares on your, your screen. So the next point is to hint your contours, they will be aligned to some horizontal lines. Uh, therefore, you have the vertical matrix. This is the second point what you can do by hinting. And when we talk about hinting, then we have a chance to control the stem weights. You can measure your stems in your font and you can define the PPM size where stems are changing their width from one to two pixels until to six, from five to six pixels. What true type hinting also can uh, is to adjust a little bit the character width. Sometimes arch the character width by one pixel. And here you have the possibility, I will show you later how you do it, to enlarge the character width by one pixel. That's a large difference to uh, postscript hinting. You can't change the character widths uh, when you make a postscript tinting for your font. So in the next part, this was the only part uh, I'm talking about uh, hinting. Now I would like uh, to show you how to hint. Therefore, Jimmy was so kind and sent you the FreeSans uh, BFB file. Uh, if you didn't receive it, maybe uh, you find it on uh, your computer. It comes together with FontLab and you can find it in the program uh, folder, in the FontLab program folder. Um, before, before we talk about uh, hinting and you will see how we hint the font, we have to ensure that we work with uh, two type outlines. And this free science font BFB file is postscript based at the very first. So FontLab comes with uh, prepared action set for converting your contours. You see we have postscript ones to convert this type one contours in postscript to type. The curves to true type, contour direction is true type, and the Third instruction, the, the third command is convert your postscript hinting to two type instructions. So if we run this action set for all glyphs in the font, so our whole font is changed from postscript outline to true type. And now we can change for our true type outlines to the true type hinting panel. Excuse me, Monica, can you hear me? Yeah. 
I hear you, uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you shut off your camera and let's see if it helps the bandwidth because we're getting kind of choppy. Okay. Now that we've all seen you, we don't need to see you anymore. Maybe you can go up and click on the little camera icon, see if that'll give us our bandwidth. Oh, okay. There we go. Don't. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much. You, I'm not sure. I don't see your screen now, so maybe you have to. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Do something okay. so I see your screen again. So. No, we don't want that. Say no. I'm, I don't want my webcam, but we want to see your screen. Yeah, but. Okay, Can but you click when on? I switch off when when I switch off the webcam, then you don't now see the screen. You, then can you do share? Click on the share icon there. Yeah. I can't. It should be good. I can't share the screen if the camera is switched off. Is that the way it is? I, hmm, I never. Screen. Okay. Well, then, if that's the way it is, I guess we'll have to put the webcam back on. Oh, here's somebody saying they are seeing it. Okay, so they say they see your screen, so don't worry about the camera then. Say close. Okay. Close that. People are saying they see your screen. Okay. So okay, good. Continue? Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I switched to phone clip so before before we we hint the font, we should have measured the font. That means uh, that all stems are covered and all vertical zones, all alignment zones are um, measured. Interesting for. For the hinging is this little um, button, the three dot button in the true type options panel. Can you see it quite good on the screen? Jimmy? Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. So People are saying yes. Are, okay. So uh, all. Uh, our true type printing options we need uh, to adjust before we we uh, and hint the font are behind this little button so it should be golden or uh, uh, should have a diamond part or something like that because here is the most important stuff for true type hinting behind this button what we have here are is the stamp table at first, the alignment zone table at second, and some general options. We'll talk about them later. When I said we measure the font, that means we have to fill the stamp table, uh, and we have to fill the zones table. Normally, when you open uh, open type font, that means an OTF or a postscript based VFB file. Normally you don't have all uh, this pre-filled uh, zones and stems inside. Um, so what you, you can do is you can copy it, all your values from, from type 1 hinting and as well in the zone part you can copy from type 1 in type 1 is uh, defined alignment zones but what is in in the true type part much much better is that we can name our our zones and we can name our stems so C, for instance, here for the, the C, 
Plus that we have a uh, baseline alignment zone for the baseline uh, named B0. And if we go to zones, then we have on the right side here B0. And we can rename it and can type, this is a bottom zone, uh, name then baseline. When you do this, on the right side of this uh, alignment zone, that there is the name. So at first you can measure for the alignment zones, and then you go on the three dot button and name the zones and put in the values. The baseline, for instance, is from zero to minus 20, and this defines your baseline. As well, we have a zone for the excite. This is T0. So we can go and rename T0 to top zone for the excite. So you can name all your zones. You can I don't have uh, all zones defined. Like here in the, the three sans VFB file, we have the T2 for the capsate. We have the T1 for the figures and we have one second button zone for the descender. So all of them we can name and find their values. This is here quite good predefined. If you want to add, you can add here more alignment zones. Uh, for top zones, like X height, cap height figures, and bottom zones for descender and baseline. In Excuse me, Monica. Yeah? Can you hear me? Somebody is asking, is there a good amount of the best number of stems and zones that you recommend? Um, no, there is, there is uh, no limit. I, I don't remember a limit for... Well, not a limit, but it, what would you recommend as an optimum, the best practice? Um, you, can't, you can't take a number and say you need uh, at least five alignment zones. It depends on the font. Um, okay. You have, yeah, if you have a lot of uh, glyphs ending on the same line or in the same range, uh, then you should define an, an alignment zone. Uh, okay, for thank reasons, you. If you, have, yeah, you can, you can uh, add an uh, additional alignment zone if you have, uh, for instance, uh, superior alphabet, maybe. So for this superior, Alphabet, uh, you define separate alignment zones. Okay, that makes don't sense. Have them, you don't, yeah, you don't need. So for mm -hmm. all your vertical, for all your vertical lines, you can, uh, you yeah, you can not vertical, horizontal. For all your horizontal lines, you can put on on your uh, on a set of glyphs in your front. For that, it makes sense to define an alignment zone. Okay. Yep, that's good. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, the same we can do with, with the stems. Um, and here, 
you should take a little bit of time uh, for your font measurement before you go and hint the font. Uh, and I mean you should you should uh, measure your font uh, in case that you do a manual hinting as well as uh, for auto hinting. As better your font is measured, as better is your result of manual or auto hinting. Uh, if you, yeah, we take this predefined values here. They they are a little bit stupid because we have in the y direction uh, we have three times the same value. We don't need it. So what I would do in that case, uh, I would delete all these uh, I don't need. And as you can see, when I delete them, that um, the hinting picture of the lowercase g will change. We have here uh, values um, on the hinting, and now after delete deletion of the stem values, we don't have any values here. So what I would say is go and measure your main stems in the font. Um, that means what I would recommend is to uh, measure um, lowercase and uppercase uh, round stems, like in lowercase and uppercase O. Here we have a stem value of 78, and the second one is uh, the trade um, value is 78 for this font as well. And what we else need is in most of the cases, lowercase e and lowercase a have different middle stem values, like here. So we have 78 and 70, for instance. And let's go back to our stem table, and let's say in y direction, in y direction, we have y. Oh lowercase standard, for instance, we can name it like that. And the value, stem value, was 78. And you see FontLab puts the values where this stem is changing its width from one to two pixels, Two to three, and so on. Uh, yeah, these values are uh, calculated by FontLab. So, in that way, you should remeasure your font for the most important uh, stems. What I would recommend is to take at least one or two values for the lowercase uh, stems, round and straight, for uppercase, round and straight. Uh, look at your figures if you need some more uh, different values and go to, for instance, to the percent uh, and have a look what values you need here. And you see we have a totally different stem value. So let's go and add one more stem and say this is for the percent glue and percent was 68.
now we have we have a point where I would like you to go through the three sons font and measure this font. That means take the values for uppercase and lowercase stems for round and straight forms. Take a value for lowercase standard for lowercase e for percent. Have a look at the figures if there there are two different values necessary, I can tell you. And go to the superiors and to the fractions and measure there and put these values to your stem table. That is the moment where I would like to give uh, up the control to Jimmy again. Okay. Me? What I've done, Monica, I, can you hear me, Monica? Yeah, I hear you. Good. Okay. What I've done is I've uh, gone ahead and uh, chatted everybody. If they want to open the percent glyph in the uh, free sans font and see if they can measure the round and straight stems. And just so you know, Monica, we're about 30 minutes left by the time probably we get done with this exercise. So if anybody's having any problems uh, with the assignment there, can you chat me and let me know if you're happy and we'll, we'll take a few moments to see if you have uh, experienced or experimented with uh, measuring those stems and then we'll move on. Okay. Did we lose you, Monica? Um, no, I see you have a, I, a message there. Go ahead and click close that. It's just saying yeah. here's some tips. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, nobody has chatted that they're having a problem, Monica, so I'm going to say probably there everybody is happy. So why don't we go ahead and move on, and we'll assume that everybody has experimented. Here's one guy says he's happy. <laughs> oh. Here's somebody else is telling what them, somebody else is telling us they have 74 and 68. Yeah. Okay. okay. So so go ahead, Monica. We have about 30 minutes now. Okay. So we continue. Ding. Some more values inside. Um, this is one more. We only take values in the vertical direction. So, uh, for uh, Monica, somebody is asking, can you show how to tell which ones are X and which ones are Y? We see uh, right now you have only Y showing. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, we have here uh, the possibility to show both. Uh, X and Y stems. The vertical ones are the Y stems and the horizontal ones are the uh, X stems. Um, let me put one, uh, that means two uppercase values inside. It's uh, one, um, one uh, 84. This is uppercase, let's call it small, and one uh, uppercase, uh, no, large, and this will be 88. Okay. Um, so when we have filled our uh, stem table and zone table. Then we should go to the auto hinting option of uh, lab that you find uh, as an action set in the tools menu. And this is a prepared 
already prepared uh, action set, true type, true type auto hinting, and that we can do for all the glyphs in the font. And when you have measured your font quite good, uh, then you will have good, not the best, but good results uh, in auto hinting. And have a look at the this action set. What is TrueType auto hinting in FontLab? It's a postscript auto hinting. It's a contour direction to TrueType that we have already in in the font because we converted to TrueType, and we convert all postscript hints to sorry TrueType instructions. That's all, and we say run. Yes, for all glyphs in the font. And here you can see what was done. Uh, Fontlet found this percent stem value and put it here and here to the percent. And we, if we go to lowercase letters, you see we have here our lowercase standard. So what uh, auto hinting did is to put stem values on the right place where we have defined stems and to align to horizontal lines to our uh, alignment zones wherever the contour uh, touches this alignment zone. So we can go through all glyphs and everywhere in really the same picture we have defined um, stem values, stems, and aligned to zones. We want to make the auto hinting for the three cents before we continue. Jimmy, can you ask? Oh, you want uh, everybody try auto hinting? Yeah. Okay. Can you can you show them that menu again on the tools menu action set? Tools. So yeah, if everybody would like to go try it, go to tools action set and run your auto hinting. So what you're saying, Monica, this is just a good place to start. It's not going to be perfect. Um, yeah, FontLab auto hinting is a good base for for a manual hinting. Um, when you want to prepare your font for web usage, then I have um, I have a small giveaway for you. We tried to auto hint um, this three sentence font uh, by using this um, action set, but I have prepared another one. Uh, this is a vertical auto hinting. Maybe you know uh, already that when you prepare your font for web usage, you don't need so much hinting in the horizontal direction. Most, yeah, most of the hinting in the font for web usage is in vertical direction only. So, um, if you want to have this action set, I think um, Jimmy can send it uh, to all of you after this webinar. Um, but it okay. is not nothing else than postscript hinting in vertical direction. Uh, we have an auto hint. Cont contour direction is not changed, is to true type. And then we move, we call it here the vertical hints. Uh, and then 
we convert only the remaining the remaining horizontal hints. So okay, I think everybody everybody probably has finished doing the auto hinting now. Okay. So, Jamie, after the webinar, you may send this small action set uh, to everybody who wants to have it. Um, yes, ma'am. I always have to do anything Monica tells me I have to do it. Okay. 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 I will tell you at the end. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, <laughs> so we have, we have um, auto-hinting to the font in the vertical direction. Maybe you have used uh, the standard, uh, so you have also in the horizontal direction. I don't have because uh, I only hinted in, auto hinted in the vertical direction. But I can go again uh, to this action set and say, and say uh, for all groups in the font, uh, make a true type auto hinting run action set and done. So you see we have some stuff in the horizontal and we have also uh, some stuff in the vertical part. So as I already said, we should only look at the, at the vertical part uh, when we hint for web fonts. So what FontLab did is aligning to zones and defining stems. Um, I would like to explain to you what this auto hinting means. Uh, let's take the lowercase c and uh, reset at first this auto hinting program. We have, we have the align point tool. This is the tool you need to fix your contours on alignment zones. All your true type hints uh, have to be put on, on curve points. So if I click here, with a align point tool. So I align my C letter, C curve on the alignment zones. And you see, you get a, an arrow in one direction. We have the top zone for the X height here. You see it, it's the top zone. So we have this to down this arrow. And the baseline zone is a bottom zone. So our um, align point, align to zone in that case, um, instruction goes to the other direction from, from bottom to top. Then FontLib did um, stem definition. If you want uh, to define a stem, you can take a single or a double link. They are very similar to each other, but if you already have this alignment to the zone, then you may only use a single link and define the stem. So this horizontal um, this horizontal stem is measured in vertical direction, so we are in y direction. Excuse me, Monica. Do you think should we tell people what the linking means? Do these um, do these uh, nodes move together? No. Um, this they don't uh, move uh, the nodes together, but uh, they put the curve uh, at the nuts point to the grid. This align to zone command puts the 
curve in that point to the grid and okay. the alignment zone and at the bottom the same in the same way when we, okay good so when we use this single link and connect this two net knots then we define a stem going from one uh, grid line to another grid line and how many grid lines but are between these two nodes is defined by the stem table. If we have a look here, we have the stem lowercase standard. We have it here, lowercase standard, with uh, 78 widths. And at 20 ppm, this stem switches from one to two pixels. That we can see here in the true type preview. I say okay here, and we remember at 20, the true type preview, you can open by clicking here, uh, this preview panel button, and here you see PPM. This is switching from 19. We have one pixel. At 20, we have two pixels. See? Um, we can see as well that that is a little bit too early for uh, for the pixel jump. But there we. Well, this, this we will discuss a little bit later. Um, if we want to repeat the auto hinting, we can uh, use this uh, command convert hints to inst instruction. Um, this is by right clicking somewhere to the uh, glyph window. And we can convert hints to instructions. That means we auto hint again. We convert from postscript hinting to true type instructions. You see, uh, this is the way we did it. FontLab did it before. And you see, we have here the same. We have a single link again, but with no value. That means here. Um, this is not linked to a stem. This single link says put the curve in that point to the grid, to the nearest grid line. If you would delete this, to see our hinted curve ends somewhere between the grid lines. And if you set this single link here without linking to any stem, then you put the curve in that point to the nearest grid line. Excuse me, Monica. Uh, Renee has a question. Uh, the work that you're doing right now, does it only uh, help this glyph or does it work for all the glyphs? Can you make this uh, somehow working the same for all the glyphs or this work we're only doing for this one glyph? We, we did the hinting for all glyphs in the font, right? When we said tools, action said, other hint we did for all glyphs in the font. But what about these things you're doing here for uh, aligning this, this uh, yes. to the grid here? And this was only for, for the lowercase c. Yes. Hinting, hinting a font means uh, do similar hinting stuff for every glyph inside uh, the font. You see? D has similar instructions. We have the 
align to zone. We have the um, single links with the stem width. And what we uh, did not discuss before uh, are the so-called um, interpolations. Whenever you want to fix uh, an on-curve point by hinting, but you ca can't put it to the grid, uh, it makes no sense to put it to the grid, like here in the V, uh, you should interpolate it. Um, I will show you how to interpolate manually. Um, Choose this interpolation tool and try to click on the first keep keep the button clicked. Uh, yeah, keep the button hold down. Uh, then interpolate to this and go down to the other extreme, so you have interpolated. Um, I do it in most of the cases for the lowercase e in that way. Um, for instance, off and take this off as well. And I take the interpolation and fix that point or that point here uh, to the grid, but not only to the uh, nearest position. Uh, it's better to say, uh, calculate, please calculate uh, the nearest position uh, of the, uh, yeah, the nearest position the position of the nearest uh, grid line, but calculate it between the extremes here, here. So as you see, we don't have uh, it on the grid line now, but we can um, find an interpolation uh, to align it to the closest pixel edge. And now we have this hinted to the nearest uh, grid line, but interpolated from the from one to the other extreme. And now I can add a single link for this stem. So Again, if you would like to put this line here to the grid, um, you should interpolate between that that point and later put this to the to this pixel edge. So Monica, mm -hmm. we have a question from Alan. Alan asks, is it always best to interpolate using the furthest points away? Um, I didn't understand. Um, can you repeat the can you, question? I don't know if you can see the chat there. He says, is it always best to interpolate using the furthest points away? He said, you're using the top and bottom points. Um, no, I I used uh, top and bottom point only for this middle interpolation here. But mm -hmm. uh, for this interpolation, I used these two points, not not the very extremes uh, of this glyph. Um, to find to find the. Uh, the right extremes, I would like to show you, like FontLab does it. I don't like it. FontLab does it for 
this D, B, P, and Q, for instance. Uh, these so-called cusp points, sometimes called these uh, cusp points, they are interpolated, their position uh, is interpolated between that and that extreme. When interpolating, I would say you should follow the design. So the position of one of these two interpolated points does not depend on the height of this vertical bar of the D. Much more the position depends on the extremes of the ground form of the D. So what I would do, I would delete these two interpolations and make my own ones and say interpolated from the streams of the O form of this E. So this is how to um, where to fix where to fix the interpolation extremes. They should follow the desi design. Um, yeah, I can show maybe another. Yes, you have about uh, less about ten minutes left. Okay, so um, yeah, let me show let me show some special things. Uh, what you can do. Um, the preview window. Uh, we we have here uh, the possibility to switch between clear type, grayscale, and black and white. That you only have if you use uh, a Windows Windows version of the Font Lab. All the Mac version don't have the clear type. They have only grayscale and black and white. So you, if you use um, Font Lab on Mac, the Mac system, you can. Uh, hint uh, in the same way like uh, you can do it on the Windows uh, font lab, but you don't see uh, the right results. So what I do, what I do uh, for for this diagonal forms, they are in most of them, they are the problem. Uh, that you don't get um, the right gray values for V and W, for instance, uh, in your alphabet. Uh, I take this interpolation, Font Lab does it automatically, and align this interpolation not to, to the closest pixel edge, as we did um, on the lowercase e, but to put it on the double grid, um, it took a yeah a long time for me to understand what uh, that uh, double grid means. That means uh, this interpolation is put to the middle of uh, a pixel or to the uh, the grid. So you double your grid, and that's why you can. Put your uh, curve in that point to the middle or to the grid line. And that give, gives the most sharp uh, results for clear tap hinting. Whenever you have to hint uh, such cusp points, yeah, try to use double grid. And then I would like to show you one other trick. For instance, if you have such um, wave forms in your font, in some cases you have it for, for uh, lowercase z, for instance, uh, or for the for uh, for the two. Um, 
what you can do is you can measure the distance between uh, these two points. I try to measure it. So this is a distance of uh, 44 units. And so I put this additional value here, 44, and belongs to sterling. Okay. So why I I will show you that I take a single link and find uh, this. You see here we have the sterling. Um, and I put a single link here to, to define the stem, and a single link here to define the stem. So, and if you want uh, to ha have a straight line for very small sizes, we put one here as well, um, you can control it table. If you if we go here to the stem, sterling stem, can um, define a value uh, at which PBM size this stem should switch from zero, that means from straight line to a waved line. And let's put it on the same uh, the other pixel jumps are, that means, let's take the 18, for instance. Okay. You see, until 17, you have here a, a straight line, and from 18, you have the waved line. So this is one of thousands of tricks um, you will find out if you have uh, more than 10 years hinting experiences. So when you hint your font, uh, the most important thing is that hinting should follow the design, not work against the design. So. The designer is the best hinter, but I understand if you say, I don't like to do that. When I have designed my font, I don't like to press it into where. Yes, we just Hello. send all hinting to Monica so Monica can do the dirty work. Okay, I will do it. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, these are some hinting experiences and some secrets. Uh, one last point I have to tell you. If you have hinted your font, maybe you have automatic stuff. Um, you have to generate your font. And when you generate your font, and it, it is true type for web usage, generate it with a Font lab on the window system. Why? Um, if you say it and you take the TTF, that all you can do uh, on the Mac as well. But generating options for true type, uh, you only have this possibility to use Cache TT. Uh, this is a Microsoft tool. Uh, you can download from the Microsoft Typography website uh, for free that calculates your um, vertical and horizontal um, yeah, metrics. There are some special uh, some special uh, metrics I have to show you. Uh, when you go to the font info, 
um, uh, you have the device metrics. You have two tables in two type fonts. That means vertical device metrics, the VDMX, and the HDMX, the horizontal device metrics. That are exceptions uh, when you have hinted your uh, your contours outside of the vertical metrics of your font, so that your uh, uppercase A ring acute will not be uh, cutted uh, on top. Um, you can say from nine to that is what I do to seventy five ppm uh, all exception values are stored in that HDMX table. And the calculation of these um, HDMX and VDMX table should be done by Cache TT. Um, that's quite, quite important. Don't forget it. Uh, use VDMX, HDMX, and let do this stupid work. Uh, sorry. Um, let's, yeah, uh, Cache T do this stupid work for you. So, ever you have questions on hinting, maybe um, Jimmy will collect your all your questions and send it send the questions to me, and I will try uh, to answer one question for everybody for free. So, Jimmy, collect all the questions, and uh, I will send the answers back to you. Maybe you collect them, you put uh, all the answers together, and give all attendees uh, all these answers. Well, Monica, we we are at the, f the finish here. I just want to remind you that uh, I've been doing this tech support for font questions since 1984, and you must be crazy if you want to tell everybody to send you their font questions. But if you like it, I will send them. Yeah, one question. Uh, <laughs> okay, one question each. Okay, this is for Christmas. Everybody get one free question, huh? Um, what we're going to do here is um, Monica and I will stay for another 10 minutes or so to see if somebody would like to ask us some questions. Already, Monica, uh, Ben Archer is asking, is the Cache TT, is there anything for Mac? Is it only something like that for PC? It's only... That is that is one of two reasons. Uh, if you hint for a true time fund for web usage, do it on the Windows system. Cache TT is one of uh, the reasons, and the second one is you don't see the result for clear type hinting uh, on the Mac. So you can do it. You can do the hinting only if you are blind. Uh, yes. Yeah, on the Mac. So, clear type hinting only on the PC and true type yes. uh, on generation only on the PC. Yes, and I did want to say, Monica, you didn't get a chance to talk about Delta hinting, so I think we should all take a vote that we have Monica part two sometime, and we need to talk about the Delta hinting. Yeah, it's it's very very uh, complicated to put all the hinting experiences into one hour. I Yes, yeah. I'm wondering if uh, some people on the chat window would tell us, would they like Monica to come back and have a part two with Delta hinting? Okay, we have definitely, absolutely, um, for sure, Yes, 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 yes. Okay, Monica, I don't think you have a choice now. You have to come back. I will be back soon, very soon. As soon as okay. I can organize. 
Well, you know, Monica, I had hoped that the next one you would do about open type features and the amazing benefits of ligatures, but I think the people have spoken and they are telling uh, we need Monica hinting part two is more important maybe than open type features. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I want to remind everybody that next month we will have uh, Extensus suitcase guys uh, telling us all the tips and tricks of Extensus, which maybe you haven't had a problem, but you will someday since most of my life is spent taking uh, tech support requests of why is everything going bad in a suitcase. So you want to go to that one. Then in December we have Joe Tracy explaining how he starts from a... Uh, a blank piece of paper and makes a font which is produced and sold. And then in December we have David Bergsland who uh, will uh, be the troubleshooter of what could possibly go wrong in troubleshooting your font. Down the road we will have Matthew Carter will get your font and he will critique it for you. Matthew Carter, very famous designer. We also have John Downer coming up who will uh, show us everything about how to be careful how you create your stems and letters, uh, just letter forms and letter spacing. So very important. Also next week I will be next Tuesday doing a, uh, a do-over of my Beyond the Basics uh, webinar where we're going to try to uh, show some tips and tricks of Font Lab. So, we thank you very much for coming, and we're going to stay a while. If anybody has a question, they can type it in the chat window, and me and Monica will do our best to answer. Thank you very much, Monica. I'm going to shut down the recording now, because these questions will be a secret between us and the Font Lab users. So I think you could turn your camera back on if you want to, Monica. And we're hoping some people have some questions. Uh, they sent many, many questions on the email, and um, now they're too bashful to ask them uh, in the chat window. We might have to just answer those emails, uh, those questions by email. Okay, here's a question. Do you see the chat window? Uh, Monica says, I see, I see. can you have multiple stems of the same size but for different purposes? How about the lowercase m sometime? Um, oh, I, uh, um, I, th I thought what this question mean. Um, when you hint, when you hint, um, uh, Several uh, fonts within one uh, font family, and they are produced, um, let's say, by multi multiple master technology. Uh, then uh, you can do the, a very similar hinting to the very light font and to the extra bold, let's say. So you have different uh, different stem values in the extra bold, um, but in the light one you have uh, for several stems the same value. But what I do is I copy the stem table uh, from the extra bold to the light, and. Uh, so that I have a list of um, stems, but I change the values to the light later. So in the light, I have uh, a stem list with uh, a lot of stems with the same value. That is no problem. Uh, it's only a problem for you to uh, understand the hinting. Uh, if you have the same stem entries, uh, different stem entries with the same value, um, it's more complicated to understand. But it depends on the technology. It makes sense to have uh, different stem entries with uh, the same value. 
Okay, Alan says he thinks that that works. Next question from Christians is, so for open type, you just need divine stems and alignment zones, and that is all. Is that correct, Monica? Um, um, for for open type, uh, postscript open type, postscript based open type, I don't know if uh, he means. Um, I will ask. Yes, Christian, she, she's asking what flavor of open type. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's an answer, answer OTF. It's a postscript flavored open type. Um, yes, if you uh, make a postscript hinting, you only have um, these um, stems and you have alignment zones. You don't have more uh, possibilities in, in the postscript world. Okay, now we have Ben Archer says you, that Monica said you don't see the hinting on the Mac. Does that mean that all hinting is for other platforms? I'm not sure what... Oh, um, I, yeah, yeah. If I, I said it in that way, uh, that would be uh, wrong. Uh, you see, if you hint on the Mac, you see a hinting, sure, you see a hinting result, but you don't see the Windows result, uh, the front lab hinting. Yeah, that's what you meant. Yeah? yeah. Okay, Ben, so she means you would not see the hinting of the PC hinting, you would not see the results on the Mac. You have a different rasterizer on the PC. Okay, so Renee is asking, is there a specific order to the hinting instruction? Does it look first for links and then interpolation? You know, I was going to stop you and ask you, Monica, when you were doing that. I had the same question. Would you say first do your links, then your interpolation, then align to grid? You know, so maybe you could give it to us in the order we should do it. Um, um, yeah. So... I go, I go through the font uh, in that way that I start uh, with defining all the stems. That means align uh, to zone and define uh, single links or double links and define, defining the stems. And then I put the interpolations. Uh, in some cases, like I did for the lowercase e, I, at first, I had to define the stems, and then the interpolation of the middle bar of the lowercase e, and after that, putting a link, that means defining a stem. So it depends, it depends on the hinting of, uh, of the cliff. Depends on the de design. Very good. Well, I see Renee has a special benefit. Uh, Renee is in the Netherlands, so Renee can ask you all the questions he want tomorrow in Amsterdam at A Type I. Yes, I will be there tomorrow at uh, ten thirty. So, what a good deal for Renee. Yeah. Oh, Renee says can't make it. You have to pay so Renee can go to Amsterdam, so then Renee can ask questions, see. And Krasin, yes, I forgot to turn off the recording, so the, the questions are still being recorded. Okay, do we have any more questions? It looks like everybody is very bashful because Monica knows everything and they're very embarrassed to ask you a question. Well, we're going to have Monica part. <laughs> we're going to have Monica part two, and Renee is going to give you his bank account number so you can pay for him to go to A Type I. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not collecting. Okay. 
<laughs> and anybody who's anybody who's still with us, don't forget that Monica has these amazing little booklet you can get. You can uh, let me get my little webcam and show you again this amazing little booklet that even some of the hot shots at TypeCon were saying, "Man, I never thought of this," and it shows you what will happen as you're hinting your font. So you can you can ask Monica. Uh, that is, uh, here, I'm going to type in her uh, email address here, monabart at fontbook.de. There we go. Yes. And those little booklets, they cost about $2,000, right, Monica? Um, yeah, a little bit less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> No, these booklets at at uh, TypeCon, everybody was going crazy, so, saying, "How come nobody ever thought of this before? This is wonderful." Or I should say, wunderbar. Yeah. So if if okay, you well, you... it looks like we don't have any more questions. I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? No, I, I only wanted to say if uh, you want to have one. Uh, you may write an email and order one. Um, I can ship it. Or if somebody of you will uh, attend the the A type I, I have some with me. So contact me there. Yeah, there's Nikolaj from Denmark. He'll probably be there at the uh, A type I. Everybody at A type I, go see Monica and get a little booklet. Or, you know, Monica, you can send me a big box to Texas, and I will send them to, like you are like uh, Mrs. Santa Claus. We send uh, to everybody, you know, we, we'll all have a lot of fun. Now at least nobody is afraid of hinting anymore. Okay. Joachim... Uh, says he's going to see you at A Type I. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. So 10:30 in the morning in Amsterdam. Very good. Okay. Well, I guess I'm just going to say, if no more questions, we're going to go going once, going twice. We are gone, and we'll see you at the next webinar, Monica. Thank you so much. You are welcome. More than welcome. I always say Danke schön and God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, off Wiedersehen. Bye bye. Bye bye. We'll see you next time. I mean, do you stay online for a second? Um, if you if you'd like to talk, I can. Uh,